in the middle of the sea. And nobody could help you. Who would you ask for help? All the fat in my body because it keeps me buoyant. No, I'm asking you. Who would you? Uh, it'll help you sink as well. <laughs> it'll help you sink you faster. Okay. Um, well, I'm in the sea and there's no one around me, right? Yeah. Um, as far as I'm aware, God doesn't exist. You know, I can't. I'm not, I'm not even asking about whether God exists or not. I'm okay. asking you, who would you seek for help? No one. No one. It's it's a really oblique. Do you not do you not treat your life precious? Sometimes. Sometimes. When I'm in the mood, you know. Oh, the mood. So so at one point you want to commit suicide. No. He, he said he's a nihilist. So Maybe. what what more you want? You're a nihilist. <laughs> I mean, it is that bad, right, based right, on what he said. you're in the plane right now. Yeah. Okay. It's going to come down, crashing. What would your heart say? Wouldn't you seek for help? I mean, my heart wouldn't say anything. Because it's not like Your mom is not around, your parents are not around, your friends are not around. So who would you ask for help? Is it? Oh, it's switched off? Would you look down? Okay, no problem. The oxygen mask. The memory full? That comes from the... Oxygen mask. What if there's not... Guys, don't forget to subscribe to Dawa Wise. Inshallah. I wouldn't ask anyone, I'd just be <laughs> like, no, 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I, I know what you would do. Who I know, would you ask? I would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. I'll look your creator. Because you know from your natural inclination, okay. you know there must be something that is superior to you. There must be someone who is all powerful, all being, right? So when you say that, you know, I don't care if there's a creator or not, I'm giving you a situation where you will appreciate there's a creator. Okay. Because if yeah, the my creator, back is, uh, if he, as the car is he keeps you, if he brings you to safety, wouldn't you think? Yeah. There's no connections, yeah. there's nothing at all. You're, you're in a desperate situation. Yeah. What would be your natural uh, reaction? Just kind of give up, I guess. There's really nothing you can do. You there. would give up. Okay, even if you give up, wouldn't you say, please help me? No. You wouldn't. You know, so if I'm, you know, you say, I'm like, you know, I'm in the war, sir. There's nothing so you don't, around. you don't, you don't, so you don't value your life? Well, I do. You wouldn't at least ask for help. I value my life. There's like, you know, if there's no one around, there's no boats, no islands, no birds, nothing. You know, there's, you can't ask anyone for help, so you just kind of have to, like, Sink. No, just look. For example, you're 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 in a you're you're in a you're, you're in a just tricky situation. Tricky situation. Yeah, you're yeah. in a tricky situation. Yeah. Yeah. You've done all of your you've done your best to try and find any solution. You don't find any solution. Inside your heart, wouldn't you say, you know what? If there is something up there, please help me. I mean, there's always a solution. But you said no, no, no. You just said there's no other solution. You've exhausted. Well, no, you, didn't, you didn't say that. You said if I was floating in the ocean and there was no way to get out, what would I do? Personally, I would say. Even if you, even if you submit, even if you admitted that, look, I, I, I can't do anything else. But inside your heart, you know, look, if you are, if anybody is up there, please just help me. I know that. Okay. Okay. So that's the reason why. The reason why I'm giving you this argument. This is this is what Allah says in the Quran. Okay. Allah says in the Quran, when man is put in hardship. When he's stranded in the middle of the sea, he asks God earnestly. But when he is safe onto the shore, he associates partners with God. So when you say that I don't care if there's a God or not, okay. but if you are in that situation, you would ask for God, for God for help. So why should you be grateful to the one who gave you life? Why should I not be grateful to the one who gave me life? Yes, the one who saved you. In that particular situation, or yes. like right now? In a particular situation. In that particular situation. Yeah. If God just lifted me out of the water, yeah. put yeah. me on a boat, yeah. I'm all set. I'm not talking about God. I'm just saying whatever's up there. You say, look, what? your your natural instinct. You know when people die? Yeah. Do you ever see them seen down or up? They look up. When you see someone, even Richard Dawkins in his in his um, in his uh, in his interview, when he when there was a, wait when there was a question asked to him okay. about evolution, he got stuck. He said, Oh my God, why? He, he couldn't help with it. He's, a, he's one of the most militant atheists, and yet he says, oh my God. Okay? Why? Because this is something that is called fitra. It's, it's your natural inclination. Well, I don't think, well, I don't, there's a difference between natural inclination and oh my God being a part of our vernacular language. We say oh my God, at least in the English language, because, uh, you know, church and state were inseparable for centuries. So you, so you use a vernacular term that yes. you disbelieve in? Well, I don't believe in the vernacular term. So it's why like would you use... Well, why I don't believe in it's raining cats and dogs. Why can't you just say something else? Because that is your natural reaction. Look, when you are helpless, okay. let's say that no, nobody can help you in a particular situation. Do you use figures of speech? Huh? Do you use figures yeah, of speech? Yeah, we use figures of speech. But I'm yeah. just saying as an atheist, why would you say, oh my God? So if it was raining, 
and it was, you know, raining cats and dogs, would you believe that cats and dogs were falling from the sky? Do you believe that happens? Would you? No, do you believe that happens? I wouldn't. I'm not talking about figure of speech. Okay. I, I'm not talking about figure oh of speech. Oh my God, it's more of a I'm, talk, of I'm talking about your natural inclination, yeah? Okay. Your natural inclination would tell you, look, nobody can help me. But you know what? There must be someone up there. Your, your eyes will, go, will turn up to the sky. Okay. Because everyone is born to submit to something. Oh, right. You cannot tell me that you're born free. Because you didn't choose the way how you look like, correct? So who chose you the way how you look like? My parents. But your parents only, only, only caused. They didn't, they didn't make you look like the way how you are. So who fashioned you? This is what Allah says in the Quran. Allah, look, look, think about this. Okay. Think about this. Allah says in the Quran, right. in chapter 76, verse 1, cool. Allah says, Was there not a period of time when humans were not worth to be mentioned of? Allah is asking you this question that, look, you look, you look relatively young. So I would say at safe route, 100 years ago, you didn't exist, right? Why all of a sudden, you're well proportioned, you have intellect. So Allah then says, Inna khalaqna insan min amshad. Indeed, we created the human beings from nutwa. Nutwa meaning mixed fluid a as a test. And we gave him hearing and sight. I want to ask you this question. We all came from a mixed fluid. From a mixed fluid, from a seminal fluid. You're telling me from this seminal fluid, becoming the way how you look like, there's no need for a creator. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you're telling me that a seminal fluid can turn into something, uh, an intelligent individual like yourself? Well, a tree can become a plant. Well, sorry, a seed can become a tree. I'm just a bit tired. So you, over. okay, no, no, no problem, no yeah. problem. But I just want you to think about this. I will. What I'm trying to say, look, I'm not trying to prove to the existence of God right now. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to make you think about where, where do you think you came from? Yeah? No, no one with their sound intellect and with their, with their, with their human nature would ever tell you that this, this seminal fluid, this mixed, mixed fluid that has no consciousness can bring something into a conscious being like yourself unless there is the creator who created you that way. Well, sperm is conscious. Sperm cells are conscious. They have energy to move. Yeah, I know. But where did that origin come from? Where did it come from? Uh, your, par you your parents didn't create you? Do they do? My parents? Your parents, did, your, your parents didn't create this fluid. Yeah, they did. How? My dad did. You're, no. He has a, there's a, there's testes. No, 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 no. I'm asking you from the cell. Yeah. You're telling me that from a, from a non-conscious thing like the cell can create you something like, like you right now. Yes. Can talk, can communicate. Well, if they multiply at like two cells per minute, gradually across nine months. So who governs all of this? Sorry? Who governs it? Uh, the natural, my mum's womb, I guess. I don't know. But your, your, but your mom didn't have any control over it. Your mom didn't determine the way how you look. And what's the chances that you, what's the, according to science, what's the chances that, 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 uh, that this, um, I'm sorry to be explicit, right? What, what's the chances? I'm not afraid of anything. Oh, no, that's fine, that's Just fine. Say it. What, what are the chances that you, that, that your mother conceives you? What are the chances that yeah. mother conceives me? Yeah, yeah, um, Very intense, very small chance. Not, not really, I mean, you'd have to like, take into account all the sperm in my dad's semen at the time and yeah. you know whether my mum was ovulating yeah. or not yeah so your so your your mother and father well it's not you know the, that's not a really it's not a, it's not the slimmest chance you know people make people all the time but what i'm saying your 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 mother and father did not determine the way how you look they didn't okay they only they only did it but they didn't choose it the way how you look. Well, they didn't choose it to have long hair. Yeah. They, they, they're not I even. Chose to have long hair. Okay, is your are your parents controlling your heartbeat? No. Who's controlling your heartbeat? Uh, pacemaking cells in my cardiovascular. Oh. And where did that come from? Um, sperm's and eggs. Okay, you know, according to science today, they say the cells behave like computers, computer programs. So I can use the analogy of a computer, right? Okay. So you have a computer. Yeah. Yeah, and then you have algorithm, right? Yeah. So who put the information? Did it just come by itself? Well, someone programmed the computer. Ah, very good. Great. So, I, so, so as simple as a computer program, what about the cell that is far more complex than the computer program? Do you not think there's a creator? No. Okay. So so that, that, that's as much as I appreciate this discussion, I, I, I honestly... I, 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 I feel, look, the thing is, I'm not here to convince you. Yeah, I know. I'm not here to convince you. I'm only here to convey the message yeah. of Islam, that we believe that, that, that we have a purpose in life. There is one God. 
There's, uh, what, what, uh, there's one creator that created us with a purpose to worship him alone, to be grateful to him. And he sent prophets and messengers by okay. time. Cool. And he sent uh, the, the Quran is the last and final revelation yeah. given to the last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay. So there are many proofs and evidences that Prophet Muhammad yeah. is a true prophet. Okay. Okay. I'll just give an example. Yeah. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Are you wanting yeah. to speak to him? Am I taking exactly. up to no, no, so, oh, okay. so what I'm saying to you is that read the Quran. Yes. At least you are open minded to read the Quran. And then you have any, if you have any questions, you can ask any problems. Yeah. Back to my original purpose that brought me here. Does it matter if I read a translation or not? Okay, first of all, the, we don't say that translation is the Quran. The okay. translation is just an attempted okay. uh, 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 translation of the Quran because the Quran is the Arabic language. So it does matter? Yeah, sometimes it does matter okay. because there could be mistranslation, no problem with that. Yeah. However, uh, the basic message uh, doesn't matter which translator, for example, the oneness of God, God is only one, yeah. don't, associate, don't associate any partners with Him, there's a hereafter, there's, there's, there's Jesus Christ. Uh, don't worry about it, there's life after death. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the, these are. Does that make me have to go? Just ignore them. These are, these are things, these are things that, uh, uh, that's fundamental. Okay. There's no open for, you know, mistranslation. For example, there's one chapter in the Quran called Surah Ikhlas which gives a definition of God. Say he is Allah, he is God, one and only. Allah who samad Allah, the independent is self-sufficient. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Okay. There's nothing unto him. So, translation, the basic message of Islam you can find in the translation. Yes. But there's no problem with it. There are some mistranslations, no problem. But okay. in terms of the basic message, oneness of God, Prophet Muhammad is the last defined message of God, there's hereafter. Okay. Then there's no dispute. Yeah. So the Quran as a religious text has spread across the world, right? And there's different, you know, where's the, which is like the one that I should go to the most? Like what's the one, like, you know, if I have any discrepancy, what's the one copy of the, is it the first one? Is it the tenth one? Is it one that, sorry? You don't have a copy, so it's, there's only one. There's one version of the Quran. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't even have... if people make other versions. No, there's no one. No, 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 no. There's no different Quran. There's one Quran. Not like the Bible. The Bible okay. has different yeah, versions. Yeah, no, there's loads of versions. Yeah, but we don't have it in the Quran. But hypothetically, Alhamdulillah. If someone really wanted to, they could make a version of the Quran. They could. People falsify documents all the time. Yeah, but people try to make us, uh, yeah. anything similar to Quran, yeah. and we will definitely know yeah. the difference between yeah. the actual Quran. How would you know? How would you know the difference? Uh, if I get you two Qurans, and you have to tell me which one was the right one. But uh, I memorize the Quran. Alhamdulillah. The Quran is memorized. I know the Quran by my heart from the beginning to the end. Okay. Alhamdulillah. That's very admirable. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you know the one you memorized is? How do you know it's the one that? As far as I'm aware, I'm not entirely sure, when I learned about Islam in, you know, when I was 12 in British State Secondary School, we learned that uh, the angel Gabriel in Arabic, I believe it's Jibreel. Jibreel, yeah, you're Jibreel. Right, right. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it No, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. I, just, I don't want to be Absolutely disrespectful. Fine. Absolutely fine. Yeah, this is far, it's just because this, this is very important to people. No problem. So, uh, his recitation of all of God's rules, 10-step program, how we all came to exist, right? That recitation from Jibreel's mouth to the Prophet Muhammad's ear really made him literate to write it all down. Who? The Prophet Muhammad? No, no, no. Did that not happen? No, no. Didn't he say like... His companions wrote it. So Zayd bin Thabit was the chief scribe. Okay. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, recited yeah. what Jibreel recited to him. Then he commanded, then he told his, his scribe to write it down. I just thought that, I thought the big, the big deal was, you know, the, the big scene, the light moment was that Muhammad was illiterate. No, no he's illiterate. He is illiterate. He's unlettered, yes, yes. He's yes. illiterate. You can even read or write. Yeah, you're right. Okay, that opens right. up an entire castle of fish for me because I thought, no. you know, at least for me, some of the appeal of Islam was that, you know, God made an illiterate man literate no. and then he wrote it all down no no that's so that not. that just didn't happen no 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 isn't that concerning he had he had more than 70 scribes he had 70 more than companions. 70 scribes yes yeah. and what he, happened, how did he trust all of them good good good, good question so the chief scribe Zayd bin Thabit he was the first he was the memorizer of the Quran okay okay when he memorized the Quran this was then uh, transmitted to other companions mm -hmm. Because the Prophet Muhammad, because the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, uh, taught us to memorize. Okay. So he did. So the, 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 because the chief scribe was Zayd bin Thabit, he was the first recipient to memorize the Quran. Okay. Then we have a transmission called the ijaza. Mm -hmm. Ijaza basically basically means like a teaching certificate. Yeah. So if you have a teacher and student, 
the student who memorized the Quran receives a, a teaching certificate. Okay. We have a chain of narration, an unbroken chain of narration that goes all the way back to the Prophet Muhammad. Okay. Okay. Right. And we know their biography in and out. We know their whether they're trustworthy, whether they have memory issues, right? So this is one. Of, this is a uniqueness of Islam. I'm not laughing, but they keep making no, like fart no, noises. Just them. Just them. Just them. Yeah. 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 It's like talking in front of all these cameras. Yeah. You are talking all these recording the same things. Yeah. And after that, each one of these cameras are directly in the okay. position. And every a group of people say that same event over and over and over again. Okay. So I, we actually know or knew what happened. Okay. And knew what the prophet has said and what the scribes has written. Okay. Exactly. It's like taking the picture from the camera and spreading it Okay, over cool. Yeah. Hey, George, I hope you sincerely find the purpose. I hope so too. Sure. I'm a bit lost. Sure. Have you found the purpose? Hey. No, I'm Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so this is how the Quran is transmitted. It's memorized, mass memorized. Okay. Right. The youngest person to memorize the Quran is the age of six. And in the, in, this, in the month of Ramadan, which we are right now, uh, we recite the whole Quran. Even a child can correct an imam who made a mistake. Okay. And we could do this right now. Okay. We could do this right now. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't know you. I don't know any of them, right? Does everyone know Surah Fatiha, right? Yeah. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanir Rahim Iyaka Na'budu Iyaka Nastai Malik Ya Rabbil Alameen There you go. Okay. So it's massively transmitted. Alright. This is called Mutawatir. Multiply attested, independently verified. That is it's impossible for all of us to conspire like. Okay. Is Arabic your first language? I mean you personally, like, what was your first language that you learned to speak when you were a baby? What is it? Arabic. What is it? For me it's Arabic. For you it's Arabic. Yeah. How has reciting the Quran informed the way that you speak Arabic? How is the way oh, that's that, a good question. How has re, you know reciting the Quran? Because uh, I tried asking someone earlier. He told good me question. that the Quran wasn't written in verse or prose; that it was its own form. Yeah, no, I was confused. Mm. It's like, is it verse? Like, does it have meter, or is it just spoken prose? Right, so the Quran was revealed over a twenty-three year period. Okay. So it wasn't revealed in one book. Yes. It was revealed in a piecemeal. Yeah. So different, uh, depending on different different situations, different contexts, right? So the Quran was revealed over a twenty-three year period. But if I took the Quran yeah. to a scholar of Arabic literature, yeah. would they say, regardless of religion, the Quran is a poem? The Quran, Quran is verse. It's not. A, it's not a poem. See, uh, see, this is very, very uh, is interesting. Right that you style, yeah. yeah is it? It's totally different. It's totally different. Okay. This is the miracle of the Quran. What do you call it? This, this is the miracle of the what Quran. What do you call the writing style of the Quran? Uh, Quranic, Quranic Arabic, yeah. This is the, this is actually the greatest miracle, right? Because uh, the, the, uh, all prophets were given miracles for their people okay. to testify that they're messengers of God, right? Ah, okay. oh, salam. Okay, take care, right? But you cannot go back to the time of Jesus to verify if he brought people back life from dead, right? Yeah. But the Quran, which we say is the which uh, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the greatest miracle that we can test today, we can verify. And what's very interesting is that the Quran came with a challenge. What's the challenge? The challenge is for the Arabs to produce a chapter like it. Okay. Now the shortest chapter that you have is Surah Al Kawthar, which only consists of ten words. Okay. The Arab poets at the time of the Prophet peace be upon him, what was their reaction? You know what was their reaction? I'm dumbfounded. I cannot recreate a chapter of the Quran. Yes. And do you know what they had to resort to? What? They had to say it's magic. If I gave the yeah. Quran to AI, could AI do so? Yeah. Try your best. Try. I mean, but could it? In fact, some. It? In fact, somebody right. did it okay. using their WhatsApp. Well, I, I don't. It's I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Yeah. No, it's not. Some, you can do it. some Arabs in the, in the first world tried to mimic or yeah. make They failed miserably. Yeah, like Ryan. And even they, yeah. they realized they can't. Yeah. There's a complete difference between the, the Quran and the any, any yeah. Yeah. There is it's more than one if you find contradiction. Exactly, exactly. If you find a single contradiction. If you mistake, they won't That's it. it.
Allah says in the Quran. Yeah, Allah says Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 82, "Afala yadabruna Quran wa law kan min indi ghayra law jafiq." Do they not consider the Quran with care? How do we from anyone besides Allah they will find there are many contradictions? All you need to do, George, that's yes, your name. Yeah. That is my name. All you need to that's do, read Raihan. Raihan. Nice to meet you, George. Pleasure to meet you, Raihan. Pleasure to meet you. Now, if you are able to ponder a single contradiction, you have falsified the Quran. Okay, exactly. Right. Okay. And also the miracle of the linguistic miracle to produce a single chapter like it, which no Arab, we even have uh, we even have testimonies from the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him, like Walid ibn Mughira, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, they were all poets and they all conceded, we cannot, we cannot meet the challenge. This is, this is not a word of a poet, this is not a word of a soothsayer, and they knew that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not a poet. Okay. The Prophet Muhammad was not a soothsayer. So where is he getting these words from? This is not a regular speech of any human being, it must come from Almighty God. All right. so, so these are actually convincing proofs okay. that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon that the Quran must be a revelation from God. Okay. And the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him gave many prophecies. And I'll give you one before I let you go. Yeah, I need to. Yeah. 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 So the Prophet Muhammad, so basically prophecies meaning what's going to happen in the future events. Yes. Right? Now, nobody knows what will happen in the future events except God. Yes. God is all knowing. Mm -hmm. But a prophet will tell you things that's going to happen in the future yes. because he receives this information from Almighty oh, God. Yeah. So the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, Yes. A time will come yes. when barefooted Arab Bedouins will compete each other in constructing two buildings. Okay. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said this more than 1400 years ago. And when did it happen in recent memory? Good. So let me explain to you now. Great. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was not a Bedouin Arab. Okay. He was a city Arab. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a Bedouin Arab and a city Arab? A city Arab means he lived in a populated environment, which is Makkah. Yeah. He's talking about the Bedouin Arabs who were shepherds, barefooted, um, who were camel herders, yes. right? Who were just traveling and moving on. Where is the tallest building? Burj Khalifa. Where is that? Dubai. Dubai. And have you looked at the photo uh, in the, uh, from 1992 now? Yeah. Should I show you? I, I know what it looks like. Okay. So, and do you know the generation of Dubai? They all came from barefooted shepherds from their previous generation. How did the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him knew this will happen more than 1,400 years ago? I suppose God told him in a Very perfect good. recitation of his word from start to finish. If that's the case, it does not show that he's a messenger of God? Well, I suppose. So what's stopping you to become Muslim? Sorry? What's stopping you to become Muslim then? Well, you know, I love, I'm an art person. I love art. I'm a big art, you know, person. I'm from Spain and in Spain we're very lucky to oh, have very well preserved Arabic, Moorish architecture. No problem. I love it. I love um, the art that Islam has inspired. The only thing that makes this prophecy, you know, not really gel with me is that personally I think that most of the architecture in Dubai is an eyesore. How's that how's that related to the prophecy? What the Bare how did the, people? No, 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 no. The, the, the prophecy mentions that the Bedouin Arabs, yeah. barefooted shepherds, yeah. they're going to construct two buildings. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at the generation, yeah. that's what it's called rags and riches. Yeah. Right. The, the, the Dubai, you they think call. That, you know, how, but you yeah. think if the Bedouin Arabs building the city of Dubai was a part of a larger prophecy inspired by, like, you know, a god who's also inspired some of the most beautiful art in the world, you'd think. You know, you think God would inspire them to build a nice building? They wouldn't be. It wouldn't be possible. I'll tell you why. The, the, you see, Dubai right now is a very, is a very, it's a luxurious place, right? This would not be impossible if they had not discovered gold. Uh, sorry, they discovered uh, oil. Yeah. Do you know when oil was discovered? Like nineties. Nineteen? No. No, 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 1966. 1966. Okay, this is when sorry, the economy. Oh, this, no uh, problem. Yeah. This is when the economy boosted, and this was when they were able to afford to construct your buildings. Now, I'll give you another prophecy that's related to that. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said that a time will come when the. I'm when really sorry. I'm going to be very late, but oh, I hope sure, that sure. you know. Yeah. Stay hydrated. <laughs> Especially you know, in the we're summer months when you're out here and everything. No problem. But yeah, George, I, I, look, look, think about yeah. it. If you say that Muhammad, if you say this, uh, he could have not known this more than 1,400 years ago, unless he got I it from really, God. Really have to leave. Take care of yourself. Take care. Asalaamu Alaikum. Asha, may Allah guide him. May Allah guide him. He's open minded. He seem to be <laughs> accepting even more. Whatever you're going to give him as a proof, he doesn't seem to be... But that's only a job, only yeah. job is to convey the message. Yeah. That's it.